Hi, and welcome to our webinar, Meister Plan for the Resource Manager. Um, this webinar will be recorded and um, all participants are muted during the webinar. During our Q&A session, you can either use the raise your hand feature, um, which we show here, or you can type your question in the questions panel. And we welcome your feedback. Um, we will send out, or we will have a post-webinar survey, survey. So we look forward to your feedback. So let's get started. So our presenter today will be Debbie Somerville, our Director of Customer Success. And um, Debbie, you can go ahead and begin. Thanks, Carolyn. All right. So today I am going to focus how Meister Plan supports the resource manager. Uh, and we'll start out with some typical challenges that uh, resource managers usually face. Um, the role of the resource manager within the portfolio planning process, and then uh, dive into some of those key features. So to get started, it's important um, for those new resource managers that um, you understand where Meister Plan fits into the overall ecosystem. So Meister Plan is not a project management tool. Instead, Meister Plan is a portfolio planning tool which ensures the right projects are prioritized and determines when the projects can be done based on the capacity you have. So why is portfolio planning so important? Um, and why should you care? When companies were surveyed and asked what were the barriers from achieving your, execute, your, your strategy, um, the top three reasons, within the top three reasons, were too many initiatives going at one time and insufficiently managed resources. So your role as a resource manager is paramount to the success of your company's strategy being executed. Further research that Gartner had done is that the more robust your resource management practices are, you're likely to achieve up to five times more effectiveness at getting your strategy actually executed. So this again would mean resource managers have a role in portfolio planning and resource managers need a simple way to see the impact of priority changes so you can respond more effectively. There are many roles uh, to achieve the successful outcome of your portfolio. And, and when everyone is working together in portfolio planning, you are very likely to be successful. And as you've gathered, your role is in the context of, as it is in the context of project delivery, it is making sure you have the people ready for the work at hand and they and you support them while they're doing that work. So for you, what can get in the way? We hear from so many resource managers, a typical challenge is the amount of work being asked to get done. And your role is to effectively utilize your teams or you will inadvertently be a barrier to strategy execution. What happens when resources exceed 80% utilization. Based on research, Gartner has various, many research stating that teams that exceed 80% capacity will cause more wait times on projects, will experience more error rates on projects, and actually could cause project delivery to be up to 25 times longer. Teams with lower utilization can reduce the time to deliver business value by up to 30%. It's pretty significant. The simple truth is it just takes one key resource that can be a bottleneck and slow everything down. So let's not let that happen on your team. And when we think of resource managers and the challenges and questions you're usually faced, 
depending on how you leverage MeisterPlan today, MeisterPlan can help answer these type of questions that you're likely to receive. Where did people spend their time? Who is available to help troubled projects that least impact the portfolio with a change? What resource deficits do we have to execute this plan so we have enough time to plan to hire? When is it realistic to start projects? And where should we even hire in the future to support our future plans? Meister Plan can be your go-to spot to help answer these questions and many more. And if you're sitting there saying, my team runs agile, I would say kudos to finding a better way to manage work. However, whether your teams work agile or traditional methods for projects, portfolio planning has a purpose. Management wants a reasonable roadmap that supports the strategy. It is critical to plan around when projects can be done by aligning teams and resources. So hopefully that motivated the thought and your role within portfolio planning. What I'd like to get into now is the start of Meister Plan and give you some basics before getting into the demo. Now a quick overview of capacity and how do you know in Meister Plan how much capacity you have. Capacity is first influenced by how many people or FTE you have in each of the roles. We call those primary roles. And the availability of those people are also influenced by a few factors. One is each person is assigned a calendar that has a number of working hours. There's also the ability to put in absences for each resource. This is not about putting in every two hours they might be out of the office. It's, it's more significant absences and it should be a guide that you have as a standard. Is it more than one day or is it up to three? The other influence on availability is how much run the business time needs to be reserved for each person so they don't get over committed on projects. Another area that you will need to be familiar with, I spoke about the resources and how many resources for each role is what really drives the first level of capacity. However, you can add capacity at a role level, although that's typically done when you're doing a scenario and thinking through if I hired two more people, what would that mean to the, the, the future projects? So those two can drive capacity. It's just resources is the, is the primary influencer of that. I mentioned the other influencer is run the business. And we would recommend a process that reviews this on an annual basis or a quarterly basis, uh, depending on how much that changes for you. In Meister Plan, um, you will have some ability to have these general buckets of run the business lines that allow you to just swipe time off the top, 30% or 40% for those um, maintenance, those smaller projects that are more department led. Um, some people have more run the business time than others. So it's important for you to look at that on a quarterly basis or an annual basis and just uh, tweak, tweak those percentages. Ask your administrator for Meister Plan, what are the names of these placeholders as there's likely more than one of these that you can use. Um, I will show you how to add those to your team members and then how you can maintain those. Everything beyond run the business or these changes should be um, allowed to be towards projects that change your business. Um, that's really where um, portfolio planning comes into play is how much can you dedicate towards changing your business. 
Now there's going to be two areas of Meister plan that uh, project demands are entered and understood what you're trying to look for. One is portfolio designer, and that is a view by projects, and it's usually used by the PMO and project managers. That's where they usually start the new ideas and start um, putting in high level effort uh, for those new ideas and, and decide is when can those projects actually start um, based on the capacity at hand. Team planners, the second area that you can add project demands. Um, it has team and resources first, and it's usually um, the primary view for resource managers. Before I open up Meister Plan, I did want to show you the sequence of events that typically happen. Um, and this is um, something you can talk to your Meister Plan champion on your typical standards. Usually in step one, that initial idea um, or project uh, gets entered, um, like I said, in portfolio designer. Um, it's, it's happening when you're collecting all these new ideas and you, you probably have a process that comes up with some sort of high level effort. Step two and three then starts looking at what needs to happen from the approval standpoint. Who's going to do the work? Is it internal or external? Do you need a specific skill? Um, and how do I refine the effort by time period? Step two and three is what I'll take you through in Meister Plan today. It is assuming new ideas have been added and you've already been consulted with some high level efforts. All right, so let me get into Meister Plan. Um, the first thing I'd like to show you is just some overall navigation to that team planner. This is that second area I was saying um, you can see the people and what each person is working on. There is, um, first off, a filter um, when you drop this down that can be very handy. One of the filters that um, may work for you is um, adding a filter called resource manager. And if you're the logged in user, and you have um, resources tied to you as the resource manager, by default, those would be shown. You would need to ask your Meister Plan champion if they have maintained the resources with a resource manager um, being you. So it's important to ask that first. Otherwise, um, there is the ability to search by primary role and say you were in charge of the junior consultants you can simply sort by the junior consultants and see the information here. So that's one important factor is get to your group of people that you want to see. The second is um, allocation units. Um, some prefer longer term planning to be entered in FTE, but you definitely can switch that to days or hours. Um, if you're um, refining your work and, and your estimates. You can do a different Zoom level, year, quarter, month, or week. I'll just keep it at the month for an, right now. And um, you can search for roles and resources. So if I was just looking for one of, one of my employees, um, I can quickly go to that list. What's important is after the search, you must hit the X in order to and, and the arrow in order to get back your um, navigation um, configuration settings at the top. All right, so let's go into what do you see here? What does this information mean? First, um, when I'm looking at the role level, level um, new ideas come in and high level estimates are added to those new ideas and it's good to think of as far out as you can enter those is the practice. Ask your Meister Plan champion what's your goal. Is this three months out? You should know um, what the demand is. Is this 12 months out? 
the demand is entered at the role level. And the reason you do that is you don't need to know who's working on that yet. However, you do need to know that your team could work on it. So in this case, the work that's in January and February and March, no, nobody has the ability to work on it, even if I staffed this to somebody else, because um, after I staff these projects, it's telling me these are all red, nobody can actually satisfy this, this work. I am two FTE short if I were to even staff these projects. So that means right away there's a timing discussion that needs to happen. You can't do it all here unless you hire new people or a different team could possibly help you. So if you hover over each of these um, time periods, you, you get a little hint, and that hint at the role level tells you what capacity is remaining um, that you have for everybody during that time period. And if you were to allocate what you see here, you would have two negative FTE remaining. So um, it's probably a lot easier on a positive side to say I have three and a half capacity still able to be um, added to projects. Based on what I'm seeing here, um, I still have 1.3 FTE remaining even after I staff this work. Now at a person level, um, if you click in on any one of these um, histograms, we call this, or you hit this arrow, you can see the work for a certain person. As a resource manager, you have the rights to edit and level out the work for your team. Now notice, um, hopefully you can see, within this project, you see a faint um, line above November through the rest of this time period. That is indicating project duration. Um, if I look at rollout SAP project, you can see this starts in September. Sophie's time on this project ends in February, although the project does continue um, until later in the year. And if you want a little more information on the project overview, you can pull out this panel to the right and you can see some limited information about that project, the start and end date, where does it rank in the overall portfolio, um, and just some various other information. Editing within uh, these cells is very Excel-like. So if you needed to kind of level out this demand and you wanted to think about it now in hours, as I switch this to hours, um, I can say they really need um, 19 hours or maybe 15 hours here and 25 hours there. So you can kind of shuffle the, the time based on what you're seeing as needed within uh, the project plan. If you see red, that's, that's indicating to you those hot spots. Um, the hot spot being you don't have enough capacity, you have 40 hours short in this month and can only complete 28 hours of this, of this project. So speaking with others and the milestones they're trying to achieve, uh, you can discuss if you can um, push off some of this work to a future time period. Um, you can also um, use this hand at the bottom right hand corner and drag the time uh, just like Excel does. You can also um, copy and paste. So if I had um, control C and I just do control V to paste, you can quickly get some other figures into this Excel like um, entry form. Now, one of the things you're typically asked for is where are my bottlenecks? The histogram here is really visually giving you those bottlenecks and showing you you're going to have a concern or a constraint during certain months. Now it's possible 
um, remember the, the the idea of trying to keep people 80% utilized um, and not trying to over utilize them. Some of that is based on how much time did you reserve for say run the business. So if for example, Sophie had some run the business work that you needed to reserve off the top, ask your Meister plan administrator for those run the business projects. In my case, I know it's called run the business um, and I'm going to add that run the business work to Sophie and she is going to be needed in some of the upcoming months for a little more run the business because maybe an implementation is happening and you wanted to reserve 10 hours of Sophie for some of that support that um, could have been happening for, for other work. Now, if you saw what I did as I added, a, I hit the plus sign and it allows you to search for any project that's already part of this um, Meister plan. You cannot add projects from the screen, but you can add existing projects to people. Some other things to consider is when you're looking at utilization of team members, um, it may be necessary for, for you to look at 100% um, of them, because right in front of you, and assuming you've put in some run the business time, that's really looking at, don't let them go over 100% util being utilized. Um, if you're looking further out and knowing further out estimates are uh, definitely more, uh, more uncertain, you can change the threshold of when it turns red um, by changing the over allocation percentage here so that you're only going to see red when it's over 110% over. Again, that's, that's more for future planning three, two quarters out, but when you're right in front of um, the work, you definitely want to keep it right around 100. When resources have absences maintained in Meister Plan, you will see that as its own independent line. That allows you to see during certain time periods, um, what are those significant out of the offices that would affect project delivery because you need to put that work someplace. So if by chance um, 96 hours were gonna be needed, but then they were going to be out of the office too, you have to readjust where those 96 hours are going to roughly be, be, be done. All right, um, a couple other things to, to look at. Um, When you are doing that early planning and it's at the role level, at some time closer to the start of that project, um, let's, let's use mobile sales in a, as an example, you're going to want to staff that project and, and name a person. So if that is your process, and again, um, your Meister Plan Administrator can help share some of that um, process with you. Um, what you would do is at the role level, keep your eye on upcoming work and then determine who you can staff it to. When you do the three ellipses and indicate staff role, what happens is you go to a new view that brings over your allocation units by default, which is hours. So if you wanted to staff in days or FTEs, you, you need to change that on the screen before coming in here. It also defaults to what your search was in the previous screen. I was looking at this role um, as well as this resource manager. And this is indicating um, by month how much needs to be staffed to somebody. And if I click in the cell and that person has time available, it will take that time and allocate it to that person. So I just clicked in the cell, 48 hours were needed, and so it was assigned to Rajiv. Now, if you wanted Rajiv to have everything, you just click over here and completely allocate what you can to Rajiv. 
what's left is still more work that needs to be given to somebody else. And when you click 640 hours can be allocated Julia, I can click on Julia. What's left, another 423 hours can be allocated to Zoe. So you can allocate multiple people or one person depending on the project and then indicate staff role, just press staff role. And when you do that, that project will be assigned to those three people. Notice down here for the amount that was in each of those time periods. If by chance, once a project staffed to somebody and something comes up where say Julia cannot do it any longer, you can unstaff that back to the role and then the amount here is ready to be staffed to somebody else. All right. Um, a few other things while you're thinking of how to level off time. Um, we already talked about just keying in here a different time. And, and in this case, this one looks like Julia can't do really any of this work. Um, if we wanted to replace this resource with Jeff, we can click in replace resource type in Jeff, and now internal reorg project just moves down to Jeff. As it turns out, Jeff can't do it either. Um, a few other things you can do, you can, um, as I mentioned, perhaps um, assign Julia here, one of the projects above, Acme Inc. And so while, while the total demand is, is still here to be staffed, um, Maybe she has some pre-work that needs, needs to be done so you can add Julia as well. And what you can do from an adding demand perspective, besides keying directly into the cell, you can add all of Julia's time to this work or allocate Julia's time in a percentage. So if I added Julia's remaining time, 80 hours gets dropped down there. If I add in a percentage, add 40% of Julia's time, it's taking what Julia's working time is and adding that as um, the time commitment that, um, you know, for that project. So a few different ways to reorganize work, add it to other people, level out work, always looking for those hot spots. Um, a couple areas in terms of communication that might come into play and Meister Plan would support. Um, this is important to understand what the process would be within your organization. Um, when you highlight a project, under, say, um, we got mobile sales up here. In the panel, you have a allocation comments. It's the third option down. It's a, a person within the comments. What the allocation comments can be used for are things uh, to communicate uh, between people, usually project manager and PMO and resource manager. So. If early on this project was allocated to uh, the team and saying, I need a junior consultant, the project manager or PMO may have said, hey, can we get Julia for this work? Because we worked with her before. So they would just type in, um, can we have Julia? So when you're looking at these comments, uh, you'll see the list of who's been commenting about junior consultant and the mobile sales project. Another use case of using these comments is more for reminding yourself when you were in that meeting and they told you what this project was about, um, that you're going to need a skill for um, uh, Java and um, blah, blah, blah. I'll just do blah, blah, blah. Um, and so you could remind yourself what 
type of person you're going to need to assign or look for when the time comes for staffing. And any comments you've added for yourself, you're able to delete by hovering over that comment and um, clicking the trash icon. Some of the other panel options that might be um, interesting, um, and, and before I go there, um, the comments, it, you can use the app mentioned, just like project comments. Um, so when you, for example, um, say the project manager said, hey, can we use Julia? And you said, um, assigned Julia, and you mention that project manager, that project manager would get an email on this comment so it triggers them to go back into Meister plan now notice my email shows disabled and that's going to be an important thing you look at uh, to make sure comments when doing an app mention you're able to get notified what you would want to do is in your profile when you log into Meister plan for one of your first times is look at um, this notification area. It may ask you to resend the verification link. You should expect an email that you just say verify, um, very typical type of emails that you get when um, you're, you're getting notifications. After that, you're able to turn on notifications. So as a resource manager, you may want to be notified of any change that happened to your team on a weekly or daily basis. This should not replace that project manager or PMO or someone else from talking to you, yet it is intended to supplement that if by chance they haven't talked to you yet, you at least are notified and you can have the conversation with them on what's going on, what do I need to be aware of um, kind of deal. Maybe they're switching uh, timelines. Maybe they're shuffling priorities. Um, so this is just a supplement to what conversation really should be happening. Some of the other panel options now um, that might be helpful is um, looking at the change log for, say, anything that um, a schedule change has occurred. This could give you some insights on um, did this project's schedule change and who changed it so you know who to talk to. You can also filter for um, something more relevant to you on a regular basis is when did allocations change? So if, for example, ACME um, had allocation changes, you would see who did it and you'd show more and see exactly what it was before and what it is afterwards. So it just gives you a sense of who to speak to if you're seeing something that looks confusing. All right. Um, some other things for resource managers um, besides Assigning work to your role here, um, you may want to open a project to be able to see a little more information um, about that project. So if you do the three ellipses, you can open a project, or from the overview panel, you can open the project. In this, you have the right to see certain things you've been given um, security to see. Overview of the project, some of the status details um, down here, who's, who's working together on it, um, what is the um, estimate at completion at the total, that's usually a project manager view, but you're able to at least see some of the milestones that are coming up and just keep aware um, of timing to their milestones. Again, that is a standard that uh, will need to be discussed with you if your um, teams are using that. So this may look different, um, based on the security and uh, configuration settings that they've done.
All right, a few other views here on the left that as resource managers you could be um, interested in is a My Projects view. This isn't pulling up anything for me because I'm not assigned projects, um, but this is intended for team members and team members that were assigned projects would see if I were Sophie, I would basically get just this view that so and as a if I logged in as Sophie, I would see this list with the allocations and I'd have some time periods I can change. Um, they don't have the rights to edit their list, but it's a way to keep them informed of their priorities. The other option within my projects, if you are using actual time worked and you turned on that feature, you can they can input. Um, time worked towards those projects either on a daily or weekly basis and that would be a quicker way of getting it into there um, perhaps you've been importing those up to date so take a look at that new feature if that is something um, you're interested in I would like to also show you some reports that are pretty typical for a resource manager um, one is the capacity by role. So these are reports that you would need to configure. Um, one of the goals of long-term capacity planning is to see based on how all the prioritized projects are aligned, what's the impact to my group? And when do I need to think of hiring or sharing we got problems that I can't get all that work done? One of my favorites is to um, group by the role and sort by the remaining capacity. So I have sorted the primary role column by remaining capacity. So what's showing here is that based on what's remaining of their capacity for, and, and in this case, here's all the projects that they've been assigned. Um, over this time period, so you're looking at the longer time period, usually what's your forecasting uh, time? Is it quarterly? Is it 12 months? You would see here, um, you are short an average. I know it says grand total. It's really an average. An average one FTE short over this time period, which tells you, it doesn't matter when I readjust these projects, timing, I can't fit this work in. Usually there's a threshold you're looking at, maybe 0.5, maybe plus or minus one, but what's important to see is, can I even squeeze that work in if I just shuffle time, or do we have a problem off the gate? When you have remaining capacity that's positive, you have the ability to shuffle some of these negatives to an earlier or later time period. So that's a favorite when looking at longer term forecasts and can I fit the work in. Another favorite for um, resource managers is a, a traditional heat map. And this is looking at the percent utilized or percent allocated. And when you see the hot spots, they're over allocated. When you see the blues, uh, they're under allocated below a level um, that you're really trying to find more work for them. How do you change these colors? You can go into allocation heat map, configure the thresholds, and these colors can show you um, something different here. Maybe you only want to see when they're over allocated over 125% and under allocated 40 so that you're, you're focused on the big um, variables on the spectrum. The other report, if you are using actual time, would go into plan versus actual. This is nice to look at because if you're tracking actual time and they're not putting time towards the projects they were supposed to, it's a warning. 
and you can ask what's happening because if they still need that time on the project, you know it's going to be added to a future time period. And if that occurs, there could be a project delay. So keeping your eye on actual versus plan is um, a good practice uh, to prevent project delays. The other couple views that um, could come in um, nice uh, and handy for you is um, roadmap. And before I speak to some of these views, it's important to know and be recognize this black header bar. The black header bar uh, shows a few things to you and it, and it is um, filtering the list of what you see in these views. So, so it's important to know how it's filtering so that you could determine if you want to see more. So in my date range, I do a rolling date range and I'm looking at three months behind me and 12 months in front. That means it's only going to pull projects that either start or end within that date range. So if you're happening to be kind of searching for a project that is outside that date range, you won't find it and you'll have to remember to change that, um, the date range up here. The other influencer of what's being filtered is the portfolios you have access to. So right now I'm looking at all projects. Likely you're looking at something called um, all active or not closed projects. But if you are being also um, kind of limited to seeing projects within a certain say department, notice if I were to switch my portfolio, it also filtered out all those other projects in other people's portfolio. So just be aware of that. And then the third is the scenario. Plan of record traditionally is what's your current plan of attack that has been approved. This may be different for your organization, so ask your Meister Plan champion what scenario um, and what portfolio you should be looking at. Roadmap um, can be further filtered. Um, so I'm looking at all projects again, and I can filter this down to um, maybe um, a certain project manager that I am talking to and, and looking at all the projects for Henry and all of Henry's projects will come up now. So you can filter this list to any custom field that your, um, your instance has set up. Everybody has different custom fields and they use them different ways. So ask how these fields are used and some of them could be very relevant for you to search or filter by. So grouping can be done, but again, by any of these custom lookup fields. And um, perhaps I want to look at sponsors and group by sponsors. You can color code it also by something. Um, when, when really looking at a lot of active projects, color coding by a status or the rag color is pretty appropriate there. And if you're, say I am color coding by stage gate and you look at this and say, I don't know what the stage gates mean, there's a legend you can pull out and it will show you the color coding of um, what, you're, what your group uh, color coding it by. The roadmap is pretty nice um, being able, if you're using milestones, uh, to be able to show all the milestones, see what's coming up in the next time period. In that case, you're probably looking at month and then be able to hide all of them. If you hide the milestones, if you click on one project, it will expand just that project's milestones. So those are some of our newest features there. The other view that uh, tends to be a, um, a go-to view is project list. It's your traditional Excel looking list. Um, you can again filter. Um, maybe you only want to see certain departments here. You can filter by departments if that's one of your fields. You can also configure the columns here if you wanted to see something else. Maybe there is a sponsor that you cared to see. Um, nothing's been maintained, but um, I can also rearrange the columns. And if you have the rights, you can save 
any of these views as a new custom view, call it uh, overview by sponsor perhaps, and just um, add that view. You have access rights to it later. And by giving yourself um, as the only person who can see it, nobody else, um, it, it doesn't um, mess up anybody else's list. You, you can save as many private views as you would like. The last thing I'll show you here in Meister Plan um, is the integrations. Um, one of the things to, to consider is Meister Plan is a very open um, system that allows multiple software to be integrated with. And we continue to enhance um, this functionality. And so if you have work management tools, project management tools that have a lot of information already in there. Who's doing the work? How much time has been allocated? If you have a pretty good um, time estimating task management lo level, call us and we can talk about what's the right timing or approach to integrate those tools to Meister Plan. What that gives you is the um, is the sense of seeing the reality of what the plans really are still at the portfolio level of where the constraints are going to come into play. So that's a quick snapshot of some of the features traditionally used by resource managers. It's not all the features, of course. Um, but I wanted to show you some of those that help support your role in portfolio planning, that long-term planning, um, see transparency to your team's constraints and how to level out those constraints, and really be a tool, a software tool that multiple roles can work together in a single spot. So definitely ask your Meister Plan Administrator about your particular standards so that you are able to effectively utilize some of these features. A couple other things before we open it up for questions. Um, we do, besides the reporting, um, integrated reports we have in Meister Plan, we do have um, advanced reporting options by connecting to third-party reporting tools like Power BI or Tableau. Um, we have a reporting API. If you know how to use these um, tools, or you have somebody on site that can um, help you, we do have free templates available from our Knowledge Center. And the Power BI ones for sure are, are uh, definitely more prevalent. And um, many, many uh, customers use those. If they're not exactly to your liking, there's flexibility to change that either on your own or call us. We do have reporting specialists that can help modify any one of these reports and get you um, a view into these reports that um, really serve your, your needs. The other area that um, could help is we do have a workshop that um, is available. You can contact us to hear more. And it's really geared towards getting better at high-level estimation. It's, it's a struggle to know how, much, how long is that project? How much time should I put? Um, it's, the easy part is keying it into Meister Plan. Um, so, so coming up with those estimates, we have a workshop that walks through a practice um, that uses comparative analysis. Uh, we walk through better practices while speaking about estimations and will actually help your team set up um, using our templates to get better at putting um, effort into looking at what needs to be done, how do you know how big it is, and um, let that translate to weeks that you can key in then later to Meister Plan. Something new that we started this year um, is what I'm calling a virtual network. And there's a topic for estimating time with more confidence. 
it's um, it's free for customers. Um, right now, we're we're um, we got four companies together just collaborating on what they do for estimating time with more confidence and just sharing practices and trying new things. Um, for 2024, uh, we have a wait list. So if you're interested, uh, please email us at support at meisterplan.com if you're interested to be added to that wait list. Here are just some of the articles that and, and references that um, I used early on. And at this point, we can open it up for questions. All right. If you guys have any questions, thank you so much, Debbie, by the way. That was awesome. Really informative. Um, if you guys have any questions, you can either write them in the questions panel or you can raise your hand and we can unmute you. So. Okay. There was a lot to digest. So if um, if you don't have questions now, um, any of your functional questions, uh, reach out to our standard support channel at support at meisterplan.com. If you have a customer success package and a dedicated customer success manager, um, you can also reach out to them. All right. Well, thank you very much for participating and attending. And thank you, everyone. Have, yes, have a great evening. Thank you. Like our day. <laughs>